Welcome to Forward Ever, Leading in Challenging Times, presented by Worth Wealth Management, a weekly conversation with area leaders about how to persevere during uncertain times. Now here's your host, Gary Shorman. Hi, and welcome to Forward Ever, Leading in Challenging Times. And you talk about challenging times, some families have that, and it has to do with mental illness and caring for people in their family that that need assistance. Our guest today is Sarah Behrens, and Sarah is the executive director out at the new uh, Camber uh, Children's Mental Health Facility here in Hayes. Sarah, welcome to our program. Thank you so much for having me, Gary. You know what? I was out there, uh, well, it wasn't just a little over a week ago when there was a grand opening, which was basically the introduction of the facility, the Camber facility here in Hayes uh, to Western Kansas. And it's a beautiful facility. Tell me what you will be doing in that facility. Yeah, so we are so proud of our new facility and all of our gracious donors that um, provided us with the funds needed to be able to provide this service. So we are so excited. Um, The services that we provide out here are acute uh, mental health treatment, for uh, children and also residential treatment for children who need a little bit longer term um, treatment stay. So that typically would be about 60 to 90 days, whereas our acute treatment um, typically is about five to seven. So when you talk about children, what what kind of needs will those kids have uh, that, that would bring them to the hospital? So a lot of our kids suffer from chronic mental health conditions such as depression, um, anxiety, Um, Some of those diagnoses might include bipolar disorder. Um, We have a lot of kiddos that come to us that have struggled with self-harm or maybe just can't regulate their emotions and behaviors. And so then they act out aggressively um, or are a harm to themselves and others. Would uh, the kids that come here be from a doctor's office? How do they get into the center? So a couple of different ways. Um, If you are needing acute treatment, the best way and the quickest way is typically to um, go to your local ED, um, utilize your local mental health crisis. Um, They can initiate screens at the ED, um, the emergency departments, and they can also be redirected from crisis centers, um, local mental health centers to those emergency rooms to create a screen. Um, And then from there, they will reach out to hospitals all over the state to see who has an opening because we always wanna get um, clients in the doors as soon as they are needing that support and that need. Um, It's not always possible, obviously, but we try to do that. And so for us here, our goal is to really be that service for Western Kansas. Um, We do allocate beds specifically for Western Kansas folks. So this is an incredibly important task and need in Northwest Kansas and and the state, frankly, across the country when you watch the news. Do people really understand what this means to have this in this community in Western Kansas? I think the people who utilize the services often understand the great need. And I think those um, folks in the community understand that it's a need, but I don't know that they fully understand the impact, which is so great. Um, Before we had opened our doors, if you were needing acute services for your child, you were driving closest would be Wichita, Um, Topeka or Kansas City. And so if you're living in St. Francis, Kansas, that is quite the distance. Even if you're living in Hayes, that is quite the distance. Um, And so we are able to provide that service in a shorter time period in your backyard. That means um, that impact really is for parents who are driving those kids to those hospitals. The safety involved if, if a kiddo is really struggling with their mental health, if they're a harm to themselves and others, you're driving four hours for treatment. And in that time, you're just terrified of what may occur in that drive. Um, it also cuts down on you know, the resources in the community, such as um, ambulances and law enforcement, because they you know, don't have the resources to protect the communities that they're there to protect and also transport clients clients um, to to where treatment can be provided. So it does really impact um, the community as a whole, um, whether it's your your child who is struggling or a family member or just the impact on those service providers in the community to keep your community safe. Well, I had a law enforcement officer talk to me after the open house the other day and was talking about 
uh, they had to send uh, officers down to Wichita three times over the previous weekend to be able to assist and help uh, with patients that were in the hospital down there. And, and these are youth patients uh, that somebody has to be re- responsible for many of the transfers back and forth to different places, and that falls on law enforcement or other support services here in Hayes. And to have that here not only allows the parents to be there, but also, as you mentioned, takes the responsibility and some of that travel time out to travel to different parts of the state. Do you coordinate with other parts of the state? So we have um, sister hospitals at Canberra. So we have one in Wichita, one in Kansas City. Um, We work very closely with the state, KDADS, um, all of those agency partners, the mental health centers as well, um, to really be able to coordinate the best care um, for all clients around the state, but specifically, you know, our focus with Western Kansas. So we work with so many different partners. Um, and work hand in hand to make these things happen, school systems, our law enforcement, um, emergency departments. So yes, very much a group effort to be able to get, you know, those kiddos in the door to get the treatment needed. What did families do before? Well, that's a great question. I mean, they're utilizing their crisis services. That's what is a great, you know, already community resource we have, but sometimes those are just not enough. Um, When you have that acute need for that treatment, it can be such a barrier. So before you were driving kids to emergency departments and they were staying in those emergency departments as general medical patients until they could find a bed for them in inpatient services. Um, So you were either really trying to manage it at home or the community partners were trying to manage it. And it was just so um, overwhelming and exhausting to those resources that aren't equipped or trained to provide that service. How many how many patients do you expect, both on the inpatient and and for acute and overall? What will this facility in Hayes um, provide? So we can house uh, fourteen on our acute side and eighteen on our residential side, um, but that impact is really to be able to, on a yearly scale, help over six hundred more kids a year with mental health. You know, 600 kids in Northwest Kansas, it goes to show the the need that's involved there for making that happen. You also work with the state of Kansas and the Department of Aging and Disability. How did that all come about? So we are licensed through uh, KDADS, which is the acronym um, for that service. And so they license us. They also were a huge champion of wanting to get mental health services out back in Western Kansas. Um, and also the state lawmakers, the governor was heavily involved as well. Um, they really lobbied for this and were able to use their um influence and their ability to really secure some extra funds to ensure that we were able to bring this nonprofit back out here. I had a chance to watch some of the building process go on and it went from a shell of a building (laughs) to really just an amazing facility. It's located out by the airport uh, in the facility Mm -hmm. out there and and you guys really just tore it apart, went back to nothing and then built it into this facility. But this is not the first time, Camber may be a new name, Uh, but you were here before down at the Hadley building and tell us a little bit about the transition from that to where you are here at Camber. Absolutely. So KVC was our former name, um, and we have actually been in Hayes, um, for several years. Um, I think we opened around that 2011 year, um, and we provided acute services and PRTF services at our Hadley location. Um, and so we did that for very much for for several years. Um, and then the need was shifting to more residential beds and some licensing things had changed um, with some different requirements. So we were um, able to pivot and we provided residential beds um, until again this year now when we were able to bring um, acute services back. Hadley was a great um, house and home for us for several years. However, with the increase of safety measures um, and those regulations that are so needed to ensure that security and safety for our kids, 
we had to start to look elsewhere so that we could provide um, some new features that were really enhancing our security, um, but also providing a space for our kiddos to have some outdoor um, area so that they can experience, you know, the nature and also being able to get energy out. Um, it definitely is a part of the treatment structure. And so we wanted to provide them with that space. Um, that building served its purpose and served us well, um, but we want to continue to grow and change to the ever needing population of our clientele. And this was the best location for us to be able to do that. where do you find staff, Sarah? Because it's, it, people are talking about all over, whatever industry it is, finding the right people. You start a brand new facility, you're gonna have 600 kids that you'll service through there. That takes a team of people to make that happen. Correct, yes. So, you know, staffing is always an issue for anybody across the state, especially with the changes in that in the pandemic um, created. But we actually have some really great partners with Fort Hayes. Um, so, for instance, a lot of our direct care staff who are working one on one with those clients day to day, ensuring their safety, a lot of them are Fort Hayes students who are majoring in those helping fields, whether it's nursing, criminal justice, social work. Um, counseling, teaching, all of the above. Um, and so they kind of are able to come here, get their feet wet, hone those skills that then enhance their future career paths. Um, we also have nursing students that come from NCK Tech, um, Colby Community College, Barton Community College as well to do clinicals here. So they're getting their feet wet in learning as well. Um, and then of course, we always take students on for um, clinical departments. So therapy um, students, those kinds of things. So we really get a lot of our staff from the Fort Hayes population. Um, and then we also have a lot of our staff are really from um, around this area. Um, you know, several of our clinicians were either born in Hayes and raised in Hayes or around here. So we really pull from every population that we can um, in, in the local community, but we really try to provide jobs for our, you know, for our staff that are that are local. Um, we want to utilize our community and provide them with those resources. Well, you're a Western Kansas girl yourself. Uh, we talked about that a little earlier. I want to take a break and come back, find out, because this program talks about leadership. I want to find out how you kind of got into the helping kids with mental health issues career. So we'll, we'll take a quick break. We'll come right back to Forward Ever, leading in challenging times with our guest, Sarah Behrens, who's the executive director of the Camber Children's Mental Health Facility here in Hayes. Back after this. The most successful investors are those that can keep their emotions in check and take a longer term view at you know, what portfolios will be worth three to five years down the road. I'd say that's the most important in determining what investor outcomes are. Market corrections will continue in the future. We've seen many of them over the years, only to see equity prices rise higher, and that'll be the case in the future. Worth Wealth Management, enhancing lives and strengthening families. Welcome back to Forward Ever, Leading in Challenging Times. Sarah Behrens is our guest. She's the executive director of the new Camber uh, Children's Mental Health Facility here in Hayes. Sarah, uh, how did you get into this field? What got you started helping kids with mental health issues? Yeah, that's a great question. I think it's so... Um, I've heard it described so many different ways. Some people call it a calling. Some people call it um, something they just are drawn to. I think for me, it really began when I was a little girl and I would see those commercials on TV about those in need. And I just thought, why aren't people helping them? And so it's always been in the back of my mind. And then when I was in high school, I was fortunate enough to be on a peer counseling um, group that we had in our school. And so I was able to go to some conferences and learn about mental health. Um, and people who struggle with suicidal ideation and every sort of myth or stereotype that I had, you know, previously heard in just general, you know, conversation with people had been kind of blown out of the water. And I thought, wow, that is so interesting that there are these kids who really feel like they don't have a voice or that nobody speaks, you know, is, is saving them or keeping them safe. And so that's really what sparked my interest um, in the social work field. I do have my master's in social work. 
um, and do have a clinical license. And so I just knew that I wanted to help. So I really began my career in child welfare. I worked in foster care, family preservation. Um, I did a stint at DCF doing, you know, and some investigations for part of my education. Um, and I just wanted to be able to advocate for these people who don't have a voice or feel like their voice isn't needed or heard. Um, and so that's really what sparked my passion for this field and then it continues to grow and change and and really my understanding of trauma you know the experiences that we go through as a child we really are trying to um, heal from even into our adulthood and uh, until the entirety of our life um, and so I find it to be an honor and a privilege to be able to explore that trauma with my clients or with our clients and really try to focus on, we can't change the things that happen to us, but we can change how we react to them or how it defines us. Um, and so that is the passion that keeps me going is to be that person who sees the potential in these kids when they can't see it in themselves. One of the things that discussion points uh, during the open house I have to say is that it was like this is the the best quality, highest state-of-the-art facility in the Midwest. Mm -hmm. um, how do you describe that to people? Because many folks don't understand what all you do, but you see the facility, the way you have set it up to work with kids, the safety that's involved with that, the, the kind of training. Um, it is it is really fantastic to have that type of facility, that quality facility here. But how do you describe that in, in a short term to people that are out in the community? Yeah, I really you know, that's that's a great question, because that's so difficult because there's so many words um, that you can put to it. But really, I think the extra security, the extra um, supports that we have in place because we are 24 seven create an environment of physical safety. Um, for these kids, but even beyond that, the approaches, the modalities, the interactions of our staff, because they have the biggest hearts of anybody, um, is really providing emotional safety for these kids. And if you have physical safety without emotional safety, you can't make a lot of progress. And so it's really our goal, and we're always changing and improving to create um, the ability to meet that goal of really providing not only a physical safety place, but a safe place for emotional healing where you are emotionally safe. And we are sort of that soft landing place um, where you can come and for even just a moment, be able to let your other people kind of take up that, that you know, that trauma, you know, they can hold that and house that for you. So you get some relief um, and then build those skills to hopefully build foundations so that you are able to be more resilient because these things are going to continue to happen. Things continue to happen to us throughout our lives. It's it's the way that we learn how to process those things that really set us apart. You know, uh, most people don't think about a hospital until they need one. Mm -hmm. And same way with mental health facilities. This one really works with and specializes in children's issues. Um, somebody that has that and somebody that deals with it understands the need. Those that don't may know of somebody that needs help or a young person that, that needs some direction or guidance or how do they connect with Camber and, mm -hmm. and get into the system? Absolutely. So really, the first step is utilizing your community resources. Um, you know, we we are here to provide that need that community resources aren't able to do or is beyond their capacity to cope. Um, and so really, that first step is reaching out, utilizing your community resources, whether that's your community mental health center, um, your school counselors, um, those private practice clinicians, you know, all of those community resources. Um, that is a direct link then if those are not meeting the need to get to those upper levels of what, what we do here, but they can also always contact our admissions department um, and, and, you know, get some guidance on where to go if they just have no idea where do I go from here? What do I do? What are the steps? Um, they can call up here locally. We're happy to walk them through or provide them with those contacts as well. Well, Sarah, thanks to you and your team at Camber for the work you're doing. And it's so important to not only our community, but Northwest Kansas to have a facility like Camber here in this area to be able to not only let parents help and be a part of it, but it just helps so much with not taking somebody way away and trying to get them help and then bringing them home. Thank you for all the work you and your team do. Thank you so much.
Our guest is Sarah Barron. She's the executive director of the Camber Children's Mental Health Facility located here in Hayes. Thanks for listening to Forward Ever, Leading in Challenging Times. It's brought to you by Worth Wealth Management, where you can live with confidence. I'm Gary Shorman. Thanks for joining us for Forward Ever, Leading in Challenging Times, presented by Worth Wealth Management. Join us right here next week for another episode with host Gary Shorman. Until then, remember to move forward ever, backward never.